That's great. All right, awesome. So I want to say once again, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I really, really, really appreciate it. The backdoors and breaches thing has gotten weird and how it's expanded over the how many years? Four? Four years. Mm -hmm. um, 80,000 decks have been sold or are currently, we've given them away, they're in circulation. Teams are using them all the time to develop their skills. And one of the things that I'm excited to show you tonight, Jason's going to be playing the version of Backdoors and Breaches up on the screen with our illustrious panel. And Jason will introduce them here in a second. And this is completely available for free as well. Uh, Jason, can you go back? And there we go. So it's all available on GitHub at play.backdoorsandbreaches.com. If you click on the GitHub link, the GitHub link shows you all of the files, and you literally can do like a Git clone, copy it down, and do a Python simple HTTP server and host it locally. But even cooler, uh, can you go back to the main screen and open the game up? You can brand this to your company. In the lower right-hand corner, it says Black Hills Information Security and Backdoors and Breaches. You can rep replace those logos with your own company logo so you can play this with your customers as well. Uh, we were joking about it before. How do we make money out of this? We don't. We don't. That's kind of the point of all of this. Um, so this was created specifically to make incident response tabletop exercises suck less. The best way to do it and walk through it is to play it. Uh, Jason's going to be the, the incident master. I'm going to walk around with Ian, who's in the red coat. And we're just going to hand you guys the mics for questions and different interjections and things like that. But the stars tonight are the people on stage that are going to play this game. Where do we have the Rolos, by the way? Yeah. You got the Rolos. All right, we'll, we'll get to those here in a second. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jason. And thank you so much for coming. Jason, take it away, sir. All right, everybody. Hey, thank you. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to give you a real quick overview of Backdoors and Breaches right after they introduce themselves. So we asked our friends from Hacker Valley to come. We asked John Hammond to come. We asked Meryl to come. We asked Leslie to come and play this game with you, because some of you may know who they are. If you don't know who they are, I recommend you find out who they are, because they are giving out more content and more educational resources than any anyone else that I know in the entire information security industry. That's why we invited them to come up here. So Chris, quick introduction of yourself. Hey, how's it going everybody? Chris Cochran, I am uh, one of the co-founders of Hacker Valley Media with my brother uh, Ron Eddings over here. And also, you heard it here first, I just signed on as Chief Evangelist at Huntress. So I'll be working with this good man right here as well. So there's that. Alrighty, well, hey, thanks so much. Uh, my name is John Hammond. I'm a senior security researcher at Huntress. Uh, super duper excited to get a little bit more of a Huntress expansion pack for a lot of backdoors and breaches. Uh, and I have a silly YouTube channel where I showcase a whole lot of cybersecurity education, nerd and geek hacker stuff, uh, but a ton of fun and happy to be here with you all. Thanks. <laughs> I get to go after John Hammond. <laughs> My name is Meryl Vernon. Um, I'm a uh, red team operator, purple team program manager. I am also the COO of a nonprofit called Teach Kids Tech, getting technology and its educational resources to children in underserved communities. And I have a diversity podcast called The Cyber Queens, aimed at getting more women and LGBTQ and minority diversity into cyber. If this microphone's on, hi, I'm Leslie. It's good to see you. I, I don't do exciting stuff like that. My, uh, Let's see, I do industrial cybersecurity, I work at Dragos, I run a conference, it's really weird, and uh, I do a blog and I annoy you all on, on the internet, that's kind of what I do. Nice to see you all. <laughs> and I'm Ron Eddings, the other half of Hacker Valley Media. You can find us on any platform, we would love to invite you to check out our content, but I'll, most, most importantly, have a great time today. Yeah. yeah. So before I move on, Leslie and Dragos worked with us to create an ICS OT version of Backdoors and Breaches. And so if you're in ICS and OT security, we have a brand, well, uh, it's been out for about a year, deck of Backdoors and Breaches you can play for ICS and OT. I've gotten a chance to play. It's a completely different style of, of security. We learned so much by making it, and so you'll learn so much by actually playing it. So before I, I move on to what we're going to talk I about I do today. have to call out really quick, Jason, that there's a glaring omission in the OT version that they created. What, what's missing, John? We, we, don't, we don't have a toilet. There's no the toilet? Game. Yeah, so in the IoT village, it's all centered around, I'm not making this up, folks, it's a, it's a toilet. I can see it from here, John. Yep, 
I can see oh, the toilet. You see it too, so it's I not a bad it. acid trip. It is not the food you've been eating here in San Francisco yeah. that has led to that toilet That I experience. get from the street. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna fix that in one of the updates. We're gonna get an, an OT toilet. So okay. It's coming. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you that we have these cards uh, in back doors and breaches. And so the red cards, when you open up your deck, there's gonna be red and yellow and purple and brown and blue cards. And you're gonna be like, what is this? So I'm gonna give you a real quick overview of what is this, and then we're gonna play the game. So the red cards are the initial compromise cards. It's how the attackers initially get into your organization. So the very first one here is trusted relationship. If I click on the button here, it zooms into it, and so we can see that a trusted relationship is a trusted third party who has access to your network is compromised. The attackers use this to pivot to your internal resources. I don't know if you ever think about this, but you don't have to just worry about your network. You have to worry about every other network that has access to your network. If that doesn't keep you up at night, I don't know what does. And so there are times where it's not you. You didn't do it. They did it. And they used their access to get into your access, and now they have access to your environment. And so now you have to worry about everybody else that has trusted relationships with you. So if I hit the refresh button up here, or if I hit down here to random, and then I hit refresh up here, and then it should say nope, and then I go over here, exploitable external service. I don't know what this means. No matter how many times I've played this game for like the last four years, I still don't know what this is. And that's what the point of backdoors and breaches is, is so that you get to learn things that you don't actually know. So an exploitable X service, an ex External service has a misconfiguration of publicly available exploits. The attackers take advantage of this and attack and pivot to internal resources. You know, sometimes you don't think about the things in your network until you have a reason to think about the things inside your network. What can detect this is firewall log review, server analysis, and the tools to do this are Metasploit failed patching process and unauthorized system set up by an employee. Has that ever happened to anybody? Has an unauthorized system set up by an employee ever happened in your environment? You got to rephrase that. Okay, question. okay, good. Wait, yeah. Let's rephrase that question because it's not just this guy. All right. How many of you have actually stood up that system that got breached <laughs> at one point? Okay, all right. Not so many. How about, okay, let's try this. How many of you have been blamed for the system that got stood up in your environment and then you had to take the heat <laughs> for it? So, all right. All right, I'll show you one more and then we'll move on. So this is a password spray. So your initial compromise was a password spray. So the attackers use a password spray to get into your environment. And so if you don't know, a password spray is generally where they use the same password for every single user. And so they'll use something like season and year. Why? Because every 90 days you have a password policy that says update your password. And it has to be a certain length in size, and it has to have a capital letter, and it has to have numbers, and it have, has to have a special character, which means spring 2023 exclamation point is exactly what most of your employees will pick. And so what we do is we do an attack against your environment where we take the same password and we use it for every single employee, and after you get to like, I don't know, 75, you finally find that one that works for you. And we do it every 15 minutes so it's slow and low, and your password like protection never catches it. And we use this all the time, and the tools to do this are spraying toolkit, fireprox, hydra, mail sniper, brute loops, and MSL spray. We put the tools that we actually use to do these attacks on the cards so that way you know what it, the attacks are. I love playing with high school students. I love playing with high school students, and I show them this card, and they're like, what's spraying toolkit? I was like, it's right there on GitHub, buddy. Go I love get playing it. this game with high school security administrators. They're like, <laughs> what the hell are you teaching my students? And I just go, mwah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. The kids are getting it from John on YouTube anyway. <laughs> that is true. All right. So anyone here, raise your hand if you know what Fireprox is. Fireprox. Anyone here know what that tool is, what it does, Fireprox? Okay. So how many of you, if you saw a series of failed passwords all coming from the same place, would see if it's coming from the same IP address? You would look to see, is it some coming from the same IP address? Well, we figured out that that was a problem for us when we were doing password sprays. So we have a tool called Fireprox that allows us to attack you from almost a never-ending stream of IP addresses. Ha-ha! Which makes your life miserable as defenders. Now that you know that tool exists, now you won't be looking exactly the same that you were before. We're trying to show you what we do as attackers so that you understand what attackers are doing. 
All right, so once the attackers get in, then they have to pivot and escalate. This is my favorite card in the deck because raise your hand if you know how to do a broadcast, multicast protocol poisoning attack. Go ahead, couple. So in this That's situation, disturbing. what I would do is have those of you that raised your hand explain it to the rest of us. But since you don't have- All right, sir, oh, yeah. I saw your hand going up. Yeah, yeah, um, no, yeah. So now I would like you to explain link local multicast name resolution, go. It sucks. All right, he got that right. <laughs> well done, well done. All right, NetBIOS name service, go. Again. Yep, he's got it. Well yeah. played, sir, well yep. played. So when this card comes up, I will ask people, I will ask the team I'm playing a tabletop with, and I will say, do you know how broadcast multicast protocol poisoning works? And generally, I get like one hesitant hand goes up, and I was like, can you please explain it to the rest of us? And then they try, like you did just now, and then what I say is, how about instead you do a lunch and learn two weeks from now with five slides where you explain how this works and how you would catch it? And they're like, oh, that makes sense. Because sometimes you don't know what the attacks are until you have a reason to know what the attacks are. This, so uh, this particular uh, one is a great example of something that organizations don't know. And when we start explaining responder, link local multicast name resolution, MDNS, um, NetBIOS name service, and WPAD, they always respond the same way. Like, really? Yes. It works that easily. Yes, it does. Why did Microsoft do that? Cocaine. <laughs> and we, it's an opportunity for people to realize that these vulnerabilities exist in their environment. They learn how to identify these vulnerabilities because so few scanning tools actually pick this up. So once again, it's an educational tool. Okay. And then uh, we go on to C2 and exfiltration. So how did the data leave your environment? Because if the attackers came in and just messed up things, that's not cool. They want to steal stuff. Everybody wants to steal stuff. No one breaks into a house just to like knock stuff over. I mean, if they did, they're just a jerk. And so the same thing with the attackers that get into your environment. They're there to steal your things. And they need to steal those things by extracting those things through your network. And if they're extracting it through your network, then you can catch them. And if you can catch them, you can stop them. And so we want to talk about all the different ways attackers can exfiltrate data and use command and control in your environment. So this one is HTTP as exfil. John? Okay. So the attackers use HTTP as an exfil method. This is usually used in conjunction with some type of stego. For example, VSA agent. That's old. How many of you know what VSA agent is? It's old. And they still use it because it still works. All right, so what would catch this is network threat hunting and firewall log review. Remember that. What would catch this is network threat hunting and firewall log review. All right, and then lastly, we have persistence. Now, whenever I get a chance to play with high school students, I always explain it this way. Let's say someone breaks into your house. All right, so someone breaks into your house. They're in your house. They didn't know what it looked like on the inside. They didn't know how much good stuff you had in there. They didn't understand that you had a giant safe that would require multiple people to take out. And so they're in there. They're looking around. They're like, oh, this is good stuff. I should come back when I have more friends in a truck and a handcart and steal all this stuff. And so what they do is they leave an, a window open. They leave a back door open. That's what back doors means and back doors and breaches. They're leaving a way for them to come back because getting in is not that hard. Pivot and escalation is really, really hard. C2 and Excel, super easy. Persistence, uh, it depends. And so what they're going to do is leave opportunities every single place they can to keep coming back and keep coming back. We had a uh, person reach out to us one time and said, hey, uh, we got ransomware. And we're like, oh, that sucks. And then every time we restore from backups, we get ransomware again. I was like, oh, that sucks. They're like, what can we do? And I was like, have you thought about just burning it all down? Because that's it. That's your only option at this point. So persistence is where they can keep coming back. And so if you look at it this way, here's how you got robbed. They came in through a password spray. They then used broadcast multicast protocol poisoning to pivot and escalate. They exfiltrated data through HTTPS or HTTP, and then they installed a malicious service in order to maintain persistence. This is the cyber kill chain. Thank you, Lockheed Martin. Sorry. I have to say it every time. Okay. But this is the cyber kill chain. And so what happens is now you're explaining to everybody how they got in, how they moved around, how they got data out, and how they keep coming back. And so if you've ever wondered, like, how do you take Clue and mix it with Dungeons and & Dragons and turn it into incident response tabletop, this is what that is, right? It's Clue 
and Dungeons and Dragons and cybersecurity all mixed together to help teach people. So here's what we got. What's going to happen is you all, you see the blue cards, right? You all see the blue cards too, right? Have you ever seen Price is Right? When you were younger and you stayed home sick, did you ever see the Price is Right? And they would yell out things like, one dollar, <laughs> one dollar. And so what you're going to do is gonna, you're going to help with that. We got John and we got Ian in the audience that are going to go around. I want you to raise your hand if you think you have an idea. So as we're trying to solve this, you'll be using things like network threat hunting. If your organization doesn't use it yet, you should. And I just should all over you in front of all these people. You should do network threat hunting. All right, so I, I also want to point out, if you can't see the cards, just say what you would do, because more than likely you have a card that would match that. So don't, don't panic and be like, i got to choose the right card. We're, we more than likely have a card that will work, so don't worry about it. And then memory analysis. Right now you're thinking to yourself, is that XDR, EDR, 7R7, whatever it is that they're selling down there on the floor, is that the thing that's going to help me with memory analysis? If not, then maybe Velociraptor and volo Volatility would help with that. All right. And then we got firewall log review. Do you do firewalls? Does it have exceptions? Do you allow things in? John, I think you said something really controversial one time, and I loved it. I think it was... An organization should deny list everything until a person gives a reason why it should be allowed. That, that is an excellent point. And I usually recommend that to people who are very stressed out in the cybersecurity community because InfoSec burnout is real, and that is an incredibly effective way to get a vacation from work. So, <laughs> All right, we got crisis management. I got a question for you in the audience, and then I'm going to ask you up here. I'm going to actually go through one by one. This is going to be weird, but it's going to be fine. Can anyone in here raise your hand and tell me when does an incident become a crisis? Anyone want to raise their hand and tell me when does an incident become a crisis? You, sir. When it's in the press. When it's in the press. That's one. That, that was a good answer. What else? All right. Uh, when a, a business unit or operations is severely impacted. Okay. I like that, and I'm sorry you had to smell my elbow. You won't be the last one. All right. What else? All right. And <laughs> like how they're getting me a workout. <laughs> oh, dude, I love your mustache, by the way. It is spectacular. All right. I think a crisis is when the um, response necessary is greater than the resources you have. When the response, re that's good. Well, that was good. That was really there good. There was math or something in that. All right. Yes, sir. David. When it materially affects the ability of an organization to perform their mission. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. I love how all of you are thinking about it right now, and some of you are like, I don't know if my answer I'm not going to follow up those or, two uh, guys. I so I'm just going to keep it to myself. We should all just right. move on. So I'm going to go start with Meryl. When does an incident become a crisis? Go ahead. I always say if critical assets are involved and down, or if you have to involve legal, you have okay. to call legal, it's a crisis now. All right, pass it, John. I took the first one. It's like when it's leaked, when it's out and everyone knows about it. Okay. Chris? Yeah, I would say when it goes external to the organization or is an existential crisis for the business. Okay. Leslie? When the CEO has to come back from the Hamptons early. <laughs> Ron? You define a crisis and then you set a threshold when it matches that threshold. Okay. That, yeah, that's the technical answer, yeah. So the thing is, decide ahead of time. That's what tabletop exercises are for. Decide ahead of time when an incident becomes a crisis because do you know when the worst time to decide when a crisis is not no longer an incident? is when it's a crisis. I was working with an organization one time, I was like, and I asked the question, do you know when an incident becomes a crisis? And they're like, absolutely, Jason, when it hits level five of seven levels of severity. I was like, good lord, you have seven levels of severity? And everyone knows them? Wow. And so I was like impressed that they knew if level five was a crisis. And so if you were saying, you're like, we don't have any levels of severity. Well, maybe when you get back, that's your one takeaway from this tabletop exercise today. All right, I'm going to go through these. Isolation is one of my favorite cards when people play it, because you learned a lot about an organization. You either learn that they're a kill it with fire immediately, we hate incidents, or a let's see what the attackers are doing. Let's see if we can learn from their skills and abilities. Let's see if we can, oh, we didn't realize we had a hole right there. Thank you, attacker, for the free pen test today. 
So you well, can learn a kind lot. Of free. I mean, not free free, but yeah. 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 <laughs> Cheaper. How's that? Yes, a less experience <laughs> less expenses. All right, endpoint analysis. I was explaining to a high school student one time what an endpoint analysis. They're like, what's that mean? I was like, how about this? What if you handed me your laptop right now and just let me look through it? You're like, like like, what do you mean? I was like, yeah, I just go to like start menu, look at the services running, go to your Internet Explorer, look through the history. They're like, what the hell? And that's how Jason met the FBI. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so immediately they understood what endpoint analysis is. It's looking through the endpoint. It's looking for what abnormal might be. Cyber deception. This is near and dear to our hearts. We love cyber deception. We love it with a passion because it slows attackers down. Even if your cyber deception sucks, it still slows them down because they're like, are they using cyber deception? Oh, man, I can't trust nothing in this network. One of my favorite things about uh, cyber deception is create a fake employee on LinkedIn with a name that no one would ever know. And so when someone tries to log in with that name, that means they scraped your LinkedIn accounts looking for usernames. And like all of a sudden, as soon as someone tries to log in with Beatrice, you know, Rebecca Johnson, uh, all of a sudden they're like, that's not a real person. We got attackers in the network. All right, uh, Sim, you all have one. I'm sure they're very happy with how much money you're spending with them. <laughs> Good Lord, that's a lot of money. All right, endpoints, EDR, XDR, all the DARs, all right. Uh, user and entity behavior analytics. This is one of my favorites because sometimes people should not be doing things that they are doing at work. And you get used to what they're doing at work. And so when they're not doing that thing at work, you're like, wait a second, why is that person logging in at 4 o'clock in the morning using PowerShell right now? Because that's never happened in the history of them working here. And so that's you using user and entity behavior analytics. And lastly, server analysis. And we went real generic with this. This is every server. Because we didn't know, right? Like your environment is such a magical, wonderful unicorn butterfly <laughs> snowflake. Uh, and so we just wanted to make sure we covered all server analysis. So to kind of clarify that, if you say look at the Exchange server, server analysis. If you're looking at the database server, server analysis. Look at the web app server, server analysis. It's the catch-all for all those servers. OK. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to play. I have a scenario that I'm going to give to our panelists up here. You're going to do that thing like on Price is Right where you're like, endpoint analysis or firewall log. Or you're going to shout it out. Yeah. Uh, and then they're going to hear all that, and then they're going to come together. They're going to work together. Ron and Leslie and Meryl and John and Chris are all going to work together. They're going to decide what to do together. Because here's what I love about backdoors and breaches. Whenever you play with a team, Chris might want to be like, I want to look at network threat hunting. And Leslie's like, no, I want to take a look at the endpoint. And Ron's like, I want to take a look at a crisis management plan. And all of a sudden, we're like, yes, but you can only do one thing at a time. And they're like, oh. Oh, man, one thing at a time? Well, then I want, and they have to fight it out almost. They have to talk it out. They have to explain why they want to do it. And what happens with your teams is all that knowledge transfer starts taking place of why you would do threat hunting and why you would do this and why you would do that. And all of a sudden, they start talking to each other. Here's what I love about backdoors and breaches. You get to have very serious, consequential conversations in a fun environment. That's my favorite thing about it. I've seen people talk through some real serious stuff, but they're like, we're playing a card game. And you're like, yeah, and, that's right. And we're going to have the audience roll. Oh, we're going to have the audience yeah. roll? And we're going to pick someone to do the roll. And then what I want them to do is give us their thought of the conversation of our board of directors and what they think. And then we have some like nice treats for the people that roll yeah. to entice them to All do right, the are role. you ready for your scenario? OK, everyone ready for the scenario? So I am playing the role of the incident captain. I'm, I have the cards already selected. I know what they are. I'm going to say it to them. They have 10 turns to try to solve my four hidden cards. They have 10 turns to try to solve my four hidden cards. And they will come up with a thing. Then they got to roll the dice. That's the one part we haven't talked about yet. They have to roll the dice to see it work, if it works. Because here's who we all dislike, right? We all dislike the person in a cyber tabletop exercise that says, oh, that's the scenario? Oh, I would do this and 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 this. And everyone's like, yeah, that, 
Yeah, that sounds right. That, that sounds totally right. Yeah, I would totally do that. Yeah, if all your tools work perfectly, if everyone came to work that day, if no one's on vacation, like all these things have to be perfect in order for those things to happen. So we roll the dice to take the perfect out of it. One through 10 is unsuccessful. 11 through 20 is successful. And if you're wondering why didn't we flip a coin, because rolling a 20-sided dice is more fun. Truth. All right. All but right, wait, so. there's more. Is there? <gasps> the procedure cards. OK. So the procedure cards here, if they want to use, and I know you're like, this is a lot of rules. Just get to the game, Jason. Uh, do you see where it says established procedures and other procedures? All right, so here's the difference. How many of you at work write down the things you do at work just in case if something ever happened to you, those things would still exist at work? Exactly. That's a great, that's a great point, Jason. Exactly. So and these churros are delicious, by the way. <laughs> um, mm, yeah, way so to go. Written procedures are things that you have written down at work. You get a plus three modifier when you roll the dice because they will be helpful for to you in an incident. Other things are just things you know but never tell anybody else. And so those things, you just roll the dice and see what happens. All right, are you ready? Ready. OK. So you noticed. A sock analyst noticed over the last three weeks, you had a series of failed login attempts. A series of failed login attempts over the last three weeks, a higher percentage of failed login attempts than normal baseline failed login attempts over the last three weeks. It ended three days ago. And they were just checking to see, is this an anomaly? Is this real? Is this just a new standard? Promote that analyst. Right? And so at the, and they were like, hey, I think this is weird. I think this is weird. There was like all these failed login attempts for like three weeks, but then they kind of stopped three days ago. Security team, is this a thing? And if it is, what should we do about it first? What would we do first to see, is this a thing? What do you all think? Let's, let's shout it out. All right. Anybody want to take a crack? What would you do? You're seeing multiple failed login attempts over a period of weeks. Yes, sir. Look for successful login attempts. Yeah, right around the time that it stopped. That's not bad. Anything else? Audience, audience, audience. What do we got? What do you think? Oh, boy. Uh. <laughs> We're just having marketing. <laughs> huh? Sim. Brilliant idea. Sim. 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 Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. Anyone else have a thought? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Impossible travel. Ooh. Impossible travel. Impossible okay. so travel. So impossible travel. People are like, I, I work in security. I'm not allowed to take vacations. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, so let's prime the pump. P panel, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I have questions. Like, was it all the same user? Was the other users exhibiting the same behavior? All I different can... users. Yeah, OK. So I, I would want to go with some user analysis. Some user analysis. I, I, so would, go, I would go UEBA. So yeah. user and anti-behavior analytics. Who I does a lot of head nods I like here. modifiers. Who doesn't like UEBA? Or who doesn't know what UEBA is? Raise your hand if you don't know any idea. All right? All right, so quick heads up for the people that don't know, user entity behavioral analytics in this context is not looking at a single event log to make a determination if evil happened, but looking at the aggregate of a number of event logs to make a determination on what happened. So that's UEBA. All right. Okay. Clarifying question, uh, what are they logging into? They're logging into an external uh, web portal for employees. Gotcha. Okay. I would check out also the uh, configuration for the web service. Is Ooh. there a maximum number of attempts that you can uh, use to log in? Okay. Excellent. So, so it sounds like we have uh, server analysis, and then we have user and entity behavior analytics. So that sounds like what we got right now. Raise your hand in the audience if we think you should go with user entity behavior analytics. OK, that's a lot. Raise your hand if you think we should go with server analysis. <laughs> wow, Ron. <Nobody. laughs> you, sir, what's your name? Wow, Ron. <laughs> what's your name, sir? Yeah. Folson, you got a fan. Nice. There we go. One. Two. <laughs> fan. Got, but I'm going to let him happen. roll. I, I'm going to let him roll. For OK, you yeah, let him roll. All right, this is going to get really awkward for people over yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give it a shake. Yeah, and then have, have him read it, because I don't trust you. 
<laughs> no, no, no. You gotta, you gotta shake it. Yeah, drop it. There you go. Drop it in the. It's roll a dice in a glass. All right. What is it? It is a fifteen. Fifteen. Here you go, dude. Well done. Here's a pocket warm Rolo for you. Thank you. All right. All right. I recommend, by the way, that you get in on this early because they're just getting warmer and softer. <laughs> All right, so since you rolled successfully, and since the detection here lists user and entity behavior analytics, do you see how those two things go together? You have to roll successfully, and the detection has to be on the attack card for it to be revealed. Mm -hmm. So you just revealed that a password spray is what has been used on the outside. And by taking a look at the user and entity behavior analytics, you see that there was a successful login attempt to the badge reader system. So it's not the web server anymore. It was they moved on and they got into the badge reader system. Mm -hmm. Potentially. So is anybody on the panel gonna make a badges? We don't need no stinking badges jokes. <laughs> okay, good. Thank God. <sighs> All right, so that's turn number one. You have a successful login attempt around the exact same time that all this ended into your badge reader program in your network. What would you like to do next? And real quick question for everyone in the audience. Raise your hand if you think this is a crisis yet. <laughs> Raise oh. your hand. Crisis or not? Badge reader? We got one so far. We got one right there. OK. All right. All right. That's Just good. Here we I go. have some clarifying questions about what the badge reader system does, how big of an impact it has on my facility. Is it for like the bathroom door to get to that toilet, or is it <laughs> like to get to the missiles? Uh, it, <clears throat> the the it, whistles. The missiles. The missiles. It, okay, we might it, have a crisis. I, <laughs> yeah. I want to point out, by the way, uh, as an owner of, of a pen testing company, I have some days that are just magical for me. One of them is my testers were showing me pictures of a, of a assembly floor where they were making missiles. And I was like, I'm so proud of you guys. So <laughs> those are good days. Yeah. All right, so badge reader system, last yep. login attempt was successful. What would you like to do now based on what we have available? Network analysis. Network analysis. Ooh. So network threat hunting or uh, firewall log review? Let's do threat hunting. Leslie? I'd honestly, as a forensics person, be looking at that computer to see what they moved on to from that computer once they were on it. But Ooh. that's my two cents there. OK. So we have endpoint analysis or we have endpoint security protection analysis. It would be server analysis. Server analysis. For that, by the or way. server analysis. Yeah, because yeah. we're looking at the badge reader system. Does anyone in the audience <laughs> have a thought on this, by the way? Yes, I'm going to come around. Go for it. Was it a privileged account or just something like a guest account that was logged in? It was just a straight user account that was successfully logged in. So not a privileged account at this point. That is a fantastic amazing clarifying question. Should you give him a warm Rolo? Yes, he does get a, <laughs> a slightly warmer Rolo than the other person on the other side. Well played. I like how you set it off to the side, saving it for later. I get it. <laughs> All right, so what would you like to do next? I'm going to agree with Chris because I'm concerned about remote code execution, and I just want to know where that's coming in from and see if we can stop the bleeding before we investigate how bad it is in the environment. Okay. I John, you look like you're thinking. I'm leaning back over to that server analysis now that I think we chatted about it a little bit more. We're divided. Yeah. With Leslie, she's worked more incidents than I've created, so that's... <laughs> I know. You rock. All right, really let's go options. to the audience. If you think it's network threat hunting, go ahead and raise your hand. If you think it's server analysis, go ahead and raise your hand. Ooh. Server analysis, Hard let's battle. go. Vindicated. Tough decision. <laughs> Very vindicated. All right, so John, who wants to roll the dice? Do I, have an, uh, do I have a volunteer that wants a roll low? Who wants to roll the dice? Preferably someone in oh, the Oh, we center. got someone right there. There we go, go, sir. Go ahead and give it a roll. It is a nine. A nine. Thank you. Okay, so this is not a written procedure because for some reason you chose not to write this down, and that's okay. Well, you know? I, so I got a question on that, and, and I want to throw this specifically to Leslie because she does work a lot at IR. How many of the organizations do you go into that actually do have good documented IR procedures for analysis? Not necessarily escalation and communication, but analysis inside of their environment. I work in OT. Um, 
so so it's an exemplary case, you know, but um, not for the legacy systems that they're there. When, when you said that, when, it, when it's a, a roll of nine, my first thought was, oh, it's running win Windows NT. So <laughs> nobody knows how to do forensics on that. <laughs> all right, so whenever there's a, f let's call it an unsuccessful roll, all right? Because this is our first unsuccessful roll for today. Here's the question that you ask. And so if you're taking notes or if you want to think about this in the future, here's the question that you ask to the people who are playing. Can you give me a reason, either politically, financially, technologically, or personnel-wise, why would server analysis be unsuccessful in this time? Not for forever, because it's not for forever. It's just in this moment. Why would server analysis be unsuccessful, politically, financially, technologically, or personnel-wise? Does anyone want to raise their hand and let me know why you think server analysis right. in this moment would be unsuccessful? You couldn't install an antivirus agent on it or EDR on it. OK, so yeah, you couldn't install things on it? That, that happens. All right, anybody else? All right, come in. And all of you right now are starting to think of stuff, aren't you? You're starting to think of possible reasons why this would be unsuccessful. It's an absolutely critical server, and we can't take it down for the time it needs to do the analysis. Yeah? That yeah. cuts too close to home. Yeah. So here's what happens. While you're playing this game, any idea that you can come up with for why it would be unsuccessful is a potential finding for this tabletop exercise. And all of a sudden, what happens is you're like, well, because there's only one person that knows how to do that. Or there's only, uh, we don't have this documentation in a place that anyone else can find it. Or I, no one else has the password and username to do this. Or like you can start coming up with a list of things why it is. And here's what I want you to do when the game is over. Only fix one. Only fix one. If a team knows that every time they play this game, they're going to have a list of things to fix, they will never play this game again. <laughs> So you find the one thing to improve, iteration improvements, iteration improvements. Yes? So uh, the situation is that the security team owns that badge reader, and nobody has the password. On their team. <laughs> Not yet, but they may in time. So we're going to put a number three here, and I'll explain this in a little bit. All right, so uh, server analysis was unsuccessful. So you had mentioned network threat hunting before. You still think of network threat hunting? Let's try it. OK, try it. At this point, what other choice do we have? Well, I mean, a couple, uh, but yeah. <laughs> What's that? Isolate that thing. Isolate that thing. Oh! I think we have options, though. I think we have options, right? So wait, we've got a lot of things on the table. We've got a, we've got a roll, don't we? Yeah. For, I think, was it network threat hunting? Well, we got, well now we have two options. We okay. have network threat hunting, we have isolation. Raise your hand Ooh. if you want to do isolation. Oh. Raise your hand if you want to do network threat hunting. Oh, it's, no. Uh, it's kind of 50-50. Let's, let's, let's query the panel. All right, so network threat hunting or isolation? Threat hunting. Threat, threat, hunting. threat hunting. All right, let's do it. Isolation okay. sounds boring. All right. <laughs> isolation sounds like they no. might blow up my missiles if they notice I'm trying to stop them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I do have a quick point. Uh, what does isolation do for the game if you're successfully? Because it is a different kind of card. Yeah, so we in this game, like isolation wouldn't, wouldn't reveal an attack, would it? Like if you did isolation, it wouldn't show you anything. So if you're successful in is isolation, it gives you one extra turn. It gives you an extra turn. It kind of helps you over time to do those things. But here's my favorite question to ask when isolation is successful. I always say, who on the team does it? Tell me their name. And they're like, Oh, it's the help desk. Who at the help desk? The no, help it's the, desk. It's the network team. Yeah, they do the network team. Things. And then I ask, who says yes to isolating a system? And they're like, oh, that, oh, oh that's me. And you're like, OK, good, yeah. Right. And then I say, who takes the political fallout if you isolate something and it brings the business down and you guys lose a ton of money? And like, that's also me. I was like, all right, good. Now we all know. Great, moving on. Uh, we were playing this game with a financial institution one time, and, and it was ransomware on the trading floor. And they were like, oh, let's isolate the trading floor. And I was like, OK, how much money is that per minute? And they're like, oh, God. A lot. <laughs> yeah. But remember, it's the land of make-believes, where people throw ducks at balloons. All right, so I think we're ready to roll. For yeah, who wants to roll for network threat hunting? roll? And I got a quick question for you. How many of you feel apprehensive of rolling because you don't want to be the one that messes it up for everybody? Yeah, I like that part. All right. What do we, oh, I, that looks like a, oh, oh, Jason. 
One, you get a roll, though. No, Good job. No, Good job. No. Yeah. No. You rolled a one. A round of applause, everybody. Oh, but magic happens in the game now. Magic all right, happens. so whenever somebody rolls a one, first of all, you would have to say, why would this be unsuccessful, politically, financially, technologically, or personnel-wise? Can someone up here give me a reason why network threat hunting would be unsuccessful at this time? Anybody? Logging wasn't enabled. Logging wasn't? <laughs> yeah. how, why, when would that happen? Yeah. Same thing. Lo yeah. No no access. Anyone here not do network oh. threat hunting? Could that be the you, thing? You're like, oh, you we elaborate don't. on that? You we said don't. no access. No access to get, one, the logs were never set up because of the access, and two, there would be nothing that you could do as a response, even if you did find something. Yeah, it's one of those things where you get into an incident and people are like, we just have to do X, Y, and Z. And then you go back to management and say, you know all of those requests for services and servers that we had, that you denied? Yeah, we don't have those things because of that. All Great right. point. Inside your deck of backdoors and breaches are called inject cards. If you take a look inside your, in your deck, you'll see gray cards called inject cards. These create chaos in the game. Why? Because chaos happens during incident response. And so what I'm going to do is instead of you know, hitting the button up here. I want to try something different. OK. All right. Who has something that's absolutely crazy that happened in the middle of an incident? Like you're thinking of a hack, and something really crazy happened. Anyone have one that they would like to share with the audience? We're all under NDA. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, I'll just come up and ask you for your name and the company you work for. All right. Excellent. All right. Name and company you work for and crazy thing. Somewhere in Canada, what happened during the incident was that uh, the lead incident handler's wife started to deliver, and he had to kind of go move along. I, uh, I have a card for you. <laughs> Give it to him. Give it to him. Could you do me a favor? Could you read this card out loud for the audience? Lead handler has a baby. Thanks, FMLE leave. <laughs> that was the card you picked. Thank you so much. I'll be on Penn and Teller's Fool Us later on this month. That's your He's card. You keep it. Keep it. Oh, How much are you paying him? Oh, man. Happens more often than you think, obviously. <laughs> All right. So since, since Chris mentioned network threat hunting and it failed spectacularly, uh, what I'm going to do is have Chris take a card at random here. And then go ahead and uh, it says take one procedure card away. So what that means in here is we're going to take away your firewall log review. It's no longer a plus three modifier. It's old, like real old. Like it's the old cert firewall old, old, this right? Is the one, this is the okay. one where the manager goes, wait a minute. Everything going through the firewall is encrypted? All right, so we're moving on. You have now, so you had an unsuccessful network threat hunting. You had unsuccessful server. If they have another unsuccessful turn, they will get another inject card. You get inject cards when you roll a 20, a 1, or have three failed rolls in a row. So what would you like to do next? We could try isolation and try to get an extra turn out of it to keep it going. We could. We could also try memory analysis on that server as well, but it's not really going to help us unless they installed malware on it. Our other question at this point could be, are we dealing with, uh, with a breach because data was exfilled? Or why? we don't know why they're in the system still, and all of those avenues of exploration have failed. So at least we could start checking, has anything left the environment? You could try the firewall, which is another opportunity try to take firewall. a look at. I'm thinking, I'm thinking memory analysis. Ooh. Just, memory just, analysis? Just go for it. By the way, I love the memory analysis card because hardly anyone does it. It is so incredibly powerful, and there's lots of great tools. If you don't have this in your, in your skill set at work, you need to get it like yesterday. It is amazing. Anybody out here have anything else you would do different? Yes. Uh, you know what helps? A mic. <laughs> uh, I suggest the sim log analysis. Sim log analysis. Oh, the sim, the thing that you pay so much for, and you have not yet mentioned. <laughs> I saw one downstairs. I saw one downstairs. They that. said false positive, <laughs> zero false positive guarantee. They looked totally legit. They were handing out beer cozies. All right. <laughs> the login was on a server, or it was on a yes, server. Yes, it was on a server. 
what about endpoint analysis before memory analysis? It would be server analysis. Oh, okay, one, server yeah. analysis. Yeah. Or we could oh. we could call it an endpoint since the server is the endpoint. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah, let's yeah. roll with it. I got a pocket full <laughs> Somebody of. Somebody logged into it. I right? smell like yeah. chocolate. Let's go. All right. So I think our two options are uh, isol. All right. So raise your hand for sim. Okay. Some sim people okay. here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, raise your hand for memory analysis. Sim it is. All right, we need someone to roll the dice for Sim for us. I need a roller. Come on, come on Sim. Come Once on, again, anybody. If you have an hey, you, sir, you, sir, you thought you could just sneak in on the back and no one would see? You've been drinking, so you seem qualified <laughs> to, to rattle that and then just hand it back to me. There you go. That's awesome. Got an 11, and you get a rollo. Thank you for your service, sir. That's probably the worst gift you ever got for that, ever. All right, so it was successful, so now you don't get the inject. Cool. And by taking a look at server analysis, you see that curb roasting has taken place. Curb roasting mm -hmm. has taken place inside your environment. So if you don't know what, raise your hand if you do know what curb roasting is. You're all liars. All right. <laughs> we had Tim Medine, the guy who like pretty much discovered curb roasting, explain curb roasting one time, and he's like, I kind of forgot how it all works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is yet another one of those things that freaks people out, where they're like, you mean any user account in a domain can get a ticket granting ticket and get a password hash for a service account? Yes. Any authenticated user? Yes. Are you sure? Pretty much. All right. I like that we put the tools on here to do this attack. You're welcome. You're welcome. So that way you can figure that out. All right, so curb roasting's taking place. So now you have a password spray where curb roasting's taking place. I got a quick question for you, the panelists here. Is this a crisis yet? <laughs> By the way, for the record, it's still not in the news. And your attorneys are informing you that, uh, well, we don't have any proof that any actual data was exfiltrated, so I don't think we technically have to let the public know because you can trust the attorneys in that situation. Sounds like it's not a crisis. <laughs> All right. You can bury it under the rug. Well done. All right, so have you seen me moving these three twos and ones around? All right, so a real quick thing, and it may not have made sense earlier, but it will make sense now, is that whenever you do anything successfully or unsuccessfully in backdoors and breaches, you have a three-turn cool-off period. And that's so you don't keep brute forcing the same thing that you messed up over and over again. Uh, and also, so that way you have to start thinking differently. Because sometimes you're like, the sim. I'm sorry, you have three more turns. The sim. <laughs> you have two EDR. more turns. EDR. Can we do the sim? Uh, no, you have to rely on a different tool that you might have. But I don't know how to use any other tool. And so uh, this is our way of explaining to other teams, like, use all of your skills and capabilities. All right, so what would you like to do? You still have two things to figure out. What is the command and control and exfiltration of data? And what is the form of persistence? So you don't have to mitigate this. You don't have to fix this. You don't have to take things offline if you don't want to. How do you discover what the attackers did through network and uh, uh, C2 and XFIL and persistence? So in reality, I'd probably be looking for C2 at that point. But we've lost our powerful tools to do analysis of potential C2 with firewall logs and threat hunting being delayed. We've got to get our tools working again. You still have firewall logs. You just don't have the plus three modifier yes. for it. Yeah. Um, so we could. 50 /50. But then we could also look to see. Now we know that they've got a bunch of service accounts, potentially. So we might want to start looking at our base of hosts out there to see what they could potentially have intruded upon. And we could do that either using uh, user and entity behavior analytics again or endpoint analysis if we have EDR. Yeah, my main concern is that also looking for C2 and wondering, you know, XFIL, a lot of organizations lock down their ingress rules but do not lock down egress, making that XFIL very, very easy. So I want to know if we did that. So I'm, I, I would go to firewall logs or also I would want to know the other. Even with it being reduced to a 50-50, you would do that? Yes. Okay. Um, I've got a question for you. How many of you, just not firewall logs as far as alerts, how many of you are actually capturing NetFlow, IPFix, or Zeek at the edge of your network egress? That guy. <laughs> Who's always, there's always the person that does that sits in that area or <laughs> over there as well. All right. So what would you like to do, audience? Let's do a poll. All right. 
between endpoints and firewalls. So raise your hand if you should do endpoints. Endpoints. Or for firewall. All right. I'm thinking fire. firewall as well. Firewall it is. Firewall. All right, who wants to roll the dice for firewall? That guy. <laughs> Someone blow on it. For luck. That was weak. <laughs> a seven. A seven? Oh, no. You get a very warm roll up. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, yeah, keep it. <laughs> so let me explain it this way. At this point, you would say firewall. Can you give me a reason politically, financially, technologically, and personnel-wise why this would be unsuccessful? And we could. I'm just going to move on, though. But here's, here's the one thing I want you to learn about this game. When you roll badly, you get to learn about your own security. The bad rolls are the better rolls for this game because it starts conversations. When you roll well, you get to learn about attacks. When you roll badly, you get to learn about your own security. And so there is no such thing as a bad roll or a good roll. It's just, what do we get to learn in this moment? This is a conversation starting game. It's no, not we a had, <laughs> Jason. Yes. We had bad rolls at Cactus Con. We, had we did. Five failed rolls in a row. It was the worst day ever. Yes. Have uh, you all and, ever? Oh. And we also had, uh, what was that that was going out in the hallway? Uh, uh, there was a bag pipes. Uh, bag pipes. So yeah. the only thing that makes incident response worse is bag pipes. Yeah. And we had it. I am not joking. Yeah. We totally had bag pipes. I, so we did get one review on Amazon about this game where they said, kind of sucks. <laughs> and I was like, I could see that. Yeah, like if you bought this as like a game game and you like showed it to your family and like, all right, let's play Backdoors and Breaches, they're like, this will be better than Ticket to Ride. I, I don't know. Uh, and so it, this is a conversation starting game. It's not a like, woo, we're winning. All right, so uh, we have to figure out what to do next. We have about four turns left. What would you like to do? We still have, uh, you have ooh, all these things available. Do we have threat hunting back yet? You don't have threat hunting back. Okay. You have one more turn for threat hunting. All right. Yeah, 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 we do. Some of the, our security engineer who's been on vacation really needs to get that our, our tools fixed, our logs, our, our span ports. I mean, like, seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, Server so analysis is back up. It's not a clue. It's a fact. Server analysis is yeah, back up. I mean, right, Ron? What it's server back. specifically would we look at, though? You know, we've already looked at that server. Um, now it's really a question of what else did they do? Where else did they move? So you'd either be looking at hosts or at the network to figure that out. Where, did, where else did they go? So... Again, I think we're kind of stuck with um, endpoint. Yeah, let's looking do it. at our EDR, looking at our nice. XDR, um, seeing if they move somewhere else, or trying to figure out another way to look at networks. So one of the things that I like about the endpoint, just to throw it out there, is with modern tools, you have the capability of doing a query across every system in your entire environment. It's not standalone. Yep. If you know the right things to look for, so. What else? Anything else? Or do you just want to go with endpoint security? Let's protection? do it. All right. Let's All right, roll, let's roll the dice lucky. for endpoint security protection. We, All got, right. a, we got a person, person who is uncomfortably in the it middle of the room. It's all on you. Let's do it. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't worth it. He got a four, everybody. Oh, wait. Uh, he needs his roll up. Got a four. Oh. That's terrible. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and then I would ask the question to your security teams, can you give me a reason politically, financially, technologically, or personnel-wise? And at, I'm pretty sure at the end of this game, you would have a very long list of all the reasons your tools are not working at this point. All right, so network threat hunting's back up. It's not a clue. It's a fact. What would you all like to do next? Yeah. All, All right. in favor of threat hunting, raise your hand. <laughs> All right, yeah, threat hunting. Super Who wants to roll the dice? I just want to let you know, if, if you are unsuccessful, we'll get another inject card. Yay. No stress. All right. Our... Oh. It was, what? John, it was good. John, it was good. What? It was good, John. <laughs> It depends on your definition of good. 
If you're a hacker, it was fantastic. If you run a ransomware ring, it's fantastic. If you're a pen tester, it's fantastic. Uh, it was a one. It was a one. It was a one. It was the third fail roll and a one. I am never playing Dungeons Does that mean we and Dragons two? with two. You get two inject in cards. Two. It's a double inject. Two inject cards. Ron, go ahead and take two an inject card for me. This is why I always keep a d20 for initiative on me at all times. What do we got? Wait, wait, wait. All right, wait. Anybody else have a horrible incident response story where something happened that you can explain to us in 15 to 30 seconds or less? Preferably less. Anyone? All right. You in the orange. I had a power failure, and then the generator failed. The power failure, then the generator failed? Leslie, was that your card that we added into the expansion pack? Oh, uh, the HVAC. Uh, I thought it was yeah, power. Yeah, the, the HVAC system failing. It's almost a generator, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. We have yeah. a card in the game very similar to that. All right, I, another person way up front. got one up here. <laughs> electrical, electrical transformer failure and the encryption keys to the SAN were, were not... We're, we're not available. Nobody knew of it, where they were, the encryption key. So. Oh. I like that. I'm They're gonna have good. Ron read this card. Do we have two of them? Uh, he's gonna get the next one next. Data uploaded to Pastebin. Oh! I got a question, everybody. Is it a crisis yet? <laughs> oh, it's a crisis now? Now it's a crisis. <laughs> now it's a problem. Okay. It's never a crisis until it is. Okay. There we go. <laughs> we work with the information we have at the time. <laughs> All right. So we have crisis management. You're gonna have to roll the dice for crisis management. If you're successful, you'll get one extra turn, and you get to not worry about it. If you roll badly, we're gonna spend the next two hours talking about every aspect of your crisis management plan. All right, who wants to roll the dice? Roll. Oh, we got enthusiastic double hands up front. There we go. Oh, perfect. You got it. 11, they were successful. Oh, man. That's Woo. a win for security. Woo. And one thing I do want you to realize, when playing this game and you do have a successful roll, you'll see your team's cheer. You'll see them like, oh, thank God. Oh, yes. And all of a sudden, you're like, this is a fun and engaging tabletop, isn't it? That's what I thought. So one more thing about crisis management and rolling. I was one time playing with a, a, a team, and I said, I'm sorry, your crisis management plan was unsuccessful. They rolled a six. The CISO came off of mute, hadn't talked this whole time, and said, I beg to differ. <laughs> and I was like, OK. This will end well. Go and on. So for the next 15 minutes, he explained the crisis management plan, who gets called, when they get called, how this works, who gets spun up, all these things. And I was like, holy crap, that's a great crisis management plan. I'm going to give you a plus five modifier. And you can do that. You get to roll now. When you play this game, when you get really good at things, when all of a sudden you can't come up with a reason politically, financially, technologically, or personnel why this would be unsuccessful, start giving yourself modifiers for those things. Because you got it. You know it. You can't come up with another reason why it fails. My, my favorite thing is whenever they spend 15 minutes describing this amazing crisis management plan and you say, you get a plus five modifier, go ahead and roll, and they roll a one. It's delicious. <laughs> All right. We, wait, wait, there's two oh, injects. that's right. There's, there's two second. injects. I thought, I thought you forgot about it. No, right. I didn't forget. Thank you, John. <laughs> oh, me? I hope it's this. I hope it's, it was all. What do we got? Just a pen test. Give the defenders a random procedure card. Oh. oh. There you go. Hey. All right. So we're going to say that your network threat hunting, which is what we failed on, right? It was network threat hunting? Uh, I, I lost track. We're going to say your sim now has a plus three modifier to it. Your sim has a plus three modifier to it. Ma magic elves made it work properly now. All right. Thank, uh, thank you, Antov Chavakin. All right, so what do we want to Sim? 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 Sim, all right. Who wants to roll the dice for Who Sim? Who wants to roll for Sim? All right. I don't know. I'm beginning to think he really.